Hey everyone, Casual TF2 Casual here. Here, here. So a couple months ago I was talking to my friend Mr. Slynn about content creation and we were reflecting on our own channels as well as bouncing ideas off of each other and he hit me with this question that I really wasn't ready for. He basically said, in our realm of YouTubers and streamers, people are usually looking for money, love, or fame. Which one are you looking for? I know where you came from. And at the time, I managed to get an answer out within the conversation, but it definitely felt like a reach to have to figure that out, to have to understand the core motivation of why Casual TF2 exists within a minute or so to keep the conversation going. And he may have phrased the question slightly differently, but he shared it as if it's this sort of idea that gets thrown around frequently in his world. And if you don't know, Mr. Slynn's world is Twitch, where he's worked for a half a decade on top of having a huge background making video content and streaming. So the more I think about that question, the more I dig deeper into and past those three base options, I find it startlingly sobering to ask why have I continued putting energy into and making content for the Casual TF2 channel. It might seem like an uninteresting question to an outsider because I'm sure some of you just assume, as I have often assumed about other creators on YouTube, that I simply get a lot of enjoyment and fulfillment from making videos, and probably couldn't stop if I wanted to. And a long time ago, uh, that was probably more true. My first few videos were really only a step or two away from the sort of energy that goes into quickly photoshopping a joke image together to give your friend a laugh. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of thought around it. It was a fleeting and light presence in my life. So over the years, something changed. My relationship to this has taken on a more lasting and weighted form in my life. And having been able to have more and more conversations with other TF2 content creators in the last year, it has become apparent to me that my reason for casual TF2 is like a strange choreography of mental gymnastics that might not even have much to do with making videos themselves anymore. Money, love, and fame. So which one is it? Obviously, obviously it's for the money. But besides that, I think love and fame have both had their place, in one way or another, in motivating me. You know, because of this channel, I've actually made a number of valuable friendships and connections over the years. Even when the channel was super small, like less than 500 subscribers, it managed to attract some kindred spirits, some of whom became people I've talked to semi-regularly ever since. And in the last two years, that connection has grown so much. My barren Discord server I once used for stream announcements went from having one disagreeable contrarian who scared everyone off to a handful of disagreeable contrarians that are endeared by a larger cast of more agreeable weirdos. And the huge benefit of making weirdo content is that you can bring together a lot of weirdos from different corners of the world that may not have crossed paths otherwise, even if they were all playing the same game. The irony for me personally is that I don't have a yearning for that kind of connection like I once did. From late 2015 to early 2017, I was generally pretty disappointed and frustrated with the people in my real life, and probably disappointed and frustrated with life in general. There was a kind of loneliness, not the kind that is relieved by being around people, but the kind that, that is caused by a difference in perspectives between you and the people around you. And that lack of interpersonal alignment polarized me further and made everything seem less real and more pointless. And this is one of the factors that pushed me to start making more personal videos where I just talked candidly about things that were on my mind. There was a part of me back then that needed to say what was on my mind and put it out there almost more out of spite for the people in my real life who wouldn't understand me than out of hope that I would find people online who do. 
If you watch those talking videos from 2016, you can hear that frustration. I spoke different, and I was a different person. Just generally, my life was different back then. But that time is over. We're not there anymore. We're here now. And the me that would have really relished in the love and sense of community that is now available is a relic of the past, like my childhood. And while I am very grateful for all of the wonderful people I've met and all of the kind messages and comments I've received in the last couple of years, that love is not why I've continued to do Casual TF2. Something that caused me a lot of suffering, but in the end gave me hope, was accepting on some level that I am truly alone and solely responsible for my own life. You know, I've never been one to turn down advice or give a cold shoulder to people who are lending their hand to me. And if anything, I've done too much of the opposite in my life, trying to find my own existential quandaries in every person I met, grasping desperately to any morsel of wisdom I could find in even the most mundane. For so, so much of my life, I was the person who always had the hidden agenda to have a deep and very real conversation with people. There were so many times in, in a gathering of some sort where I would be the last to leave, the one who would never say they were tired and wanted to go home, because if there was a chance that at the very end of the night, there was this moment that we reached of of non-superficial conversation, I wanted to be there. I couldn't afford to miss that. I was so actively seeking and looking for that. When you can't find the love you're looking for externally, you start to create it internally. It sounds romantic and heroic, and it is nice to have finally seen the light at the end of that tunnel, but it's something you learn to do because at some point you have to. It's something you learn to conjure up inside of you because if you don't, the flow chart points to quitting life. Soon after my very earliest videos, I began a long tradition of making things almost solely because I found it extremely amusing to imagine people being shocked that I would make them. There's a certain kind of trolly but pure joy I get from the idea of putting people who signed up for a light, fun, and informational TF2 video on a roller coaster of chaotic obsessions and philosophical crises set to a wild soundtrack of just absurd humor and actually wild music. Um, but a roller coaster that shocks them, yet is mundane to me. And having talked so much just now about my past troubles, the psychoanalytic voice inside me is quick to suggest that that eternally lonely adolescent trapped in my amorphous and timeless psyche feels acknowledged for who he is when someone witnesses that roller coaster, even if they just say, you're not lazy purple. And jokingly, every day, I say, I am lazy purple. But in this context, yes, exactly, you see me. You see that I am not lazy purple. And just to squeeze the last bit of juice out of the uh, psychoanalysis thread, there could also be some truth in that I get a satisfaction from when something I've created and imbued with my meanness is consumed by someone else. I feel that they have seen me seen underneath my skin in a way I could never get them to see if I tried in other ways. And maybe this is just why so many artists of different disciplines do what they do, to express themselves, to give people an idea of what is going on inside of them that would be difficult to do otherwise. Something that, even if it could be parsed out intellectually, would likely lack the sheer emotional and experiential effect of a video, or song, or piece of art. My aforementioned coming to terms with a kind of loneliness and graduating from that desperate need to be understood by others 
could also be part of why I feel less compelled to make things and have people witness it as I've gotten older. This also points to another aspect of the discussion, which is the difference in motivation between making something, the creative process alone, and the need to share with people, to have it be witnessed. As a comparison, I make music for the sake of music, because I love music. I have lots of finished music on my hard drive that's not shared out in public. I have different eras worth of music in my life that I was so obsessed with making at different times that the only thing that really united those times was this belief that what I was working on then was the only thing that mattered in my life. There's heaps more unfinished music and strange half-done efforts, but some that I'll even go back and listen to from time to time just to enjoy what they give me that I can't experience from anything else. But in contrast, would I ever make a video and not share it? There's really only one video on my channel like that, which I made with a friend for the sake of getting lost in a crazy project. And it just so happened at the end, I thought, hey, this would be cool to upload. But besides that, I make videos to be seen. And even for myself, I'm past the point of making them to push the limit of what I can do. After how it feels to play Medic, I don't know if I can go much further within the confines of a TF2 video. I also don't know if I need to do that, if there's really a point trying to go much further when it's already a relatively extreme standard. The point in me bringing this up though is that I know what kind of video I'm capable of making. I don't find myself surprised along the way anymore. Uh, whereas when I was working on How It Feels to Play Medic, it had a certain special thrill and that I knew I was reaching higher than I ever had before. It was new territory. There was something exciting about just finding out if I was even capable of making a video of that kind of scale. And in projects in any kind of discipline, when you feel that way, when you're not sure if you're able to pull it off, that's kind of part of what makes it exciting. To maybe abruptly change directions, I would say I don't enjoy video editing. I used to enjoy it more, and maybe I would enjoy it if I didn't do it for a long time, but that's nothing really to worry about for you or me because I never made videos in the first place because I enjoyed editing. There are certain moments and discoveries that can happen while I'm putting together and editing a video that can be very exciting and enjoyable, but all the same, there are moments where I'd seriously rather be doing blunt, repetitious manual labor than video edit. The content of the video, the experience it creates, that is what I get excited about. I don't really enjoy the nuts and bolts of creating video content like I do enjoy the nuts and bolts of creating audio content, which is probably why I only make video content for other people to see it. And next, let's talk about fame. There was another part of me that has still wanted to keep making videos for casual TF2 because I want to be considered a TF2 YouTuber. And this has been a fantasy in my head for so long that it's hard to remember why it started. Do I want to reach a bigger audience? Yes. Do I think my kind of content can reach a bigger audience? Yes. When will the audience be big enough for me to answer those questions with no? And the answer to that is when I have a comparable audience to the most notorious TF2 YouTubers. It matters so much less to me in this regard that my content is received well or appreciated so long as it is simply known. You see, I envision a world where an average TF2 player spouts off the list of contemporary TF2 YouTubers and alongside Uncle Dane, Zesty Jesus, and whoever else is on the list, they mention casual TF2. And maybe to them, I'm the psycho one, or they just say, Oh yeah, and there's that casual TF2 guy, but he's crazy, I don't really like his videos. But at least I'm in the mix. I'm sure this may seem impossible to some of you, but I feel that even making it to this point already uh, feels like defying all odds. Attaining my goal feels like an inevitability. 
It just matters what kind of timeline you're looking at. So I have 4,000 subscribers. I have two videos with over 100,000 views. There's people who pay money to support me and listen to bonus podcasts. I have a Discord server with dozens of regulars, people who regularly chat and play together. And if you told me three years ago that I would have all of that, I would have been so stoked. Let alone if you said that at the beginning of my time making videos. And I'm sure to some other TF2 YouTubers this is not impressive. And maybe they reached all those milestones in their first couple months. And that's dope. Good for them. I've done things my own weird way and probably never been able to keep my foot on the gas for long enough or in the right way for long enough. But I wear those milestones that I have achieved like a titanium fucking body armor of pride. I remember vividly what it's like to upload a video and just get totally wired off of receiving like three comments or posting it to the, the frag clips thread in TFTV and getting down fragged and dislike bombed and that sort of being pretty fun and exhilarating. The question still remains, why does it matter that I'm seen as a real TF2 YouTuber? Of course, it would be a nice validation for me personally, but I really think I'm more allured by the spectacle of how incredible it would be if someone like me, who makes weirdo content and is a bit of a weirdo himself, was able to weather this long uphill battle and actually do it. Wouldn't it be cool if that timeline was possible? Was real? A paradigm shift in the hearts and souls of the many? And you know, even past everything that I've already mentioned, sometimes I just think of an idea that is so hilarious and electrifying to imagine that I just have to do it. When the energy's there, the video makes itself. And it can be good to remember not everything needs to be so serious and have a super clear reason why we're doing it. There's a lot of great stuff that has happened, does happen, and will happen in the world because people just kind of say, eh, YOLO, I just feel like doing this. And of course that can also fuel some pretty careless, damaging behavior. But so much of great human ingenuity is built on people taking risks and doing things people would have considered not worth it if you really crunch the numbers. There's even a lot to be said for obsession with purpose in our lives actually leading us astray. Our culture romanticizes people who have a single universal mission statement for their life and they dedicate themselves tirelessly to the exact way they've decided to execute that mission statement. But sometimes you don't need to know exactly where you are going or why you're going there to keep moving forward in one direction. Just having a good intuition about it can be enough and you can figure out the fine print later on. And finally, at some level, my purpose is to serve the community and give back. It's so incredibly hard for me to realize that there are a good number of people who watch my videos who are experiencing their own complicated personal melodrama of life right now. It's, it's surreal to remember this because my life doesn't feel particularly intense lately as it has in the past and I know what that's like. Yet there are some people who watch my content, and I am thus a part of their life, even in some minuscule way, who actually are at a peak intensity moment in their lives. To me, I find those times in our lives particularly important. They reveal things to us about who we are, what we struggle with, what we long for, where we should be heading. Despite its turbulence and volatility, I've always valued those times of life because they offered a kind of inspiration, reflection, and direction, which are much more compelling than the insights you might get when everything in life is just sort of going okay. Sometimes things need to get dramatic and need to get to a sort of dire place to wake you up. And I'm bringing this up because thinking about that is a way that I can feel my content, my speaking, my breathing, 
has any sort of impact on the world and matters to anyone at all. I find it to be one of the greatest tragedies of humanity that there are so many people lost in their lives searching on the precipice of something who desperately want to find purpose, be better, or just feel real again, who are not just ignored by family, friends, and society, but are often actively led further astray by disassociated people who've dedicated themselves to attaining a more thorough numbness. So I empathize greatly with those who are struggling in the way that I've previously mentioned. And as someone who's been there at different points myself, I think it can mean so much just to have people or a person be real with you. It's not like everyone is owed some sort of perfect role model who's going to have all the answers. Though obviously that's much better than what we have now, but sometimes so much good can just be done from having someone be real with you about that stuff, even if they don't know the answers. You can't go anywhere if people aren't willing to have the real, tough conversations. And maybe this seems like a totally zigzagged and incoherent train of thought, but some of you will know what I mean. And to those people, I hope I am contributing an encouragement to their lives, if even in an indirect way. And sometimes in life, there's something valuable to be had in just sort of committing to something and seeing it through. Why? Well, you can find out why once you get there, you know? And you'll have more to show for, more questions answered by at least having done it and learning why yourself than if you just sort of said, eh, I'm not going to commit to anything. And what you'll find, too, is when you do that, you actually find new reasons why along the way as well. Your appreciation for something can expand in so many ways that you don't expect when you continue giving yourself to it, even when you don't necessarily want to. And that's fucking cool, man. <laughs>